Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So are fiat currencies, guys, going to zero, and are we seeing it right before our eyes? I happen to catch this tweet from uh, TradingView here, currency strength over the last year. And uh, as you guys can see, the US dollar keeps pushing to the upside, while other major currencies like the Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, Euro, British pound, and Japanese yen are all collapsing. So we've got, you know, Canadian dollar down. Here's the strength index, just the, the figures for those down 8.05%. Uh, the Australian dollar down 11.85%. Uh, the Euro down 18.13%. The British pound down 22.38%. And the Japanese yen down 23.24%. Meanwhile, look at the strength up there for the US dollar, 22.42%. So then the question remains, can this be sustained? Is this the beginning of the end for fiat currencies? How long is the US dollar going to be able to maintain this? And what phase are we at in the Great Reset? As you guys can, uh, can see right here, the Great Reset is actually trending on Twitter as of the time of this recording. Um, and I feel like Swift is finally getting their ass in gear here. Swift partners with crypto data provider Chainlink on cross-chain protocol in TradeFi Play. And guys, I gotta excuse myself, my voice is uh, not so great, but I'm gonna try to plug through this. Swift partners with crypto data platform Chainlink on cross-chain protocol and TradeFi play. So too little too late. I mean, Ripple has been working on a blockchain DLT solution for years now. Uh, Swift a bit late to the game, but I guess uh, better late than never. Uh, so Swift, the interbank messaging system that allows for cross-border payments, is working with Chainlink, a provider for price feeds and other data to blockchains on a cross-chain interoperability protocol in an initial proof of concept. CCIP will enable Swift messages to instruct on-chain token transfers, helping the interbank network to be able to communicate across all blockchain environments. This will help accelerate the adoption of distributed ledger technology blockchains and benefit various institutions across capital markets. So it's looking like, I mean, for all intents and purposes, Ripple is eating their lunch. Swift is realizing, you know, the world is going the way of DLT technology. And so I guess they figure better late than never. I mean, they could have started this in 2017 when Ripple was fairly new to the scene. But, you know, they waited and waited and waited, uh, sat on their laurels, thought, well, we are the number one institutional grade money transmitter in the world. And so, you know, we don't really have to do anything. Uh, now they're finally realizing, well, we better find a solution to be part of this new global financial reality. The partnership between Chainlink and Swift in cross-chain interoperability will help bridge the gap between traditional and digital assets uh, for TradeFi institutions. So uh, interoperability obviously playing a big part in this. Uh, these guys are realizing, right, there are going to be many blockchain solutions that do various different things. And so Swift now sitting down and saying, I guess we got to play the game. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet just for posting that. And I feel like they're doing this, like I said, a little too late, considering the news that we just received from the Bank of England. OK, I saw this from Manico64. It looks like bond markets smell a systemic sovereign debt crisis that would destroy pensions and result in a massive corporate bond market implosion and bankruptcies and are betting the Federal Reserve could react like the Bank of England. QE or quantitative easing to infinity, he asks. And so I'm gonna get into this a little more, guys. The Bank of England recently dropped some news. I got this from uh, XX1796597N here on Twitter. Breaking news from the Bank of England. This was uh, just from yesterday afternoon. A news report here. Uh, just kind of reporting the state of what's going on for the Bank of England. From the Bank of England just now, uh, Jane, with uh, a rather extraordinary statement saying that they are planning a guilt market operation, uh, which is an intervention from uh, the Bank of England, uh, they say, to try to restore orderly market conditions. Let me just read out part of this statement, literally just in the last few minutes uh, from the Bank of England. Uh, they say... Um, as the governor said in a statement on Monday, the bank is monitoring developments in financial markets very closely in light of the significant repricing of UK and global financial assets. Uh, the repricing has become more significant in the past day and is particularly affecting long-dated UK government debt. Now, what, what they're talking about there is essentially part of the thing we've been talking about recently, the yields on government debt, which have spiked up to the highest rate that we've seen since the financial crisis. The, the statement goes on, were dysfunction in this market to continue or worsen, there would be a material risk to UK financial stability. This would lead an unwarranted tightening of financial conditions and a reduction in the flow of credit to the real economy. So essentially saying that this could, well, it's, it's, we're already seeing it, aren't we? You were just talking to, to Ian about this, the fact that mortgage lenders are pulling some of their products because of what's happening right now. Uh, in line with its financial stability operations, so the bank has two 
roles here. Uh, they, they have a role of dealing with what's going on in the monetary side, that's interest rates, and financial stability as well. So looking, making sure the market can function. The bank stands ready to restore market functioning and reduce any risks from contagion to credit conditions for UK businesses and households. This is the key pit bit. Sorry, I'm reading this out because we have literally just got it. To achieve this, the bank will carry out temporary purchases of long-dated UK government bonds from the 28th of September. So that's what they are planning to do. Obviously, that's from today. The purpose of these purchases will be to restore orderly market conditions. The purchases will be carried out on whatever scale is necessary to affect this outcome, on whatever scale is necessary to affect this outcome. The operation will be fully indemnified by HM Treasury. So it's been coordinated with the Treasury. Um, that's, I mean, the, the, I, I could go on, but that's the main uh, part of this statement. So buying up Treasury bonds at an unprecedented rate. And uh, the Bank of England has uh, coordinated this with the Treasury, as you heard from that news report. And Manico here saying, you know, what this could lead to destroying all pensions, all government pensions as a result. Now, I also saw this from Nick Batia here on Twitter. Something finally broke. Who had their money on British pension fund margin calls? An update on global markets, including the dollar rates and Bitcoin. Uh, he just posted this article uh, yesterday as this was coming out. He writes, let me see your bingo cards. I know one of you predicted that British pension managers would get margin called after a budget announcement from the new leadership. We now have our first major intervention of the cycle. Sorry, Bank of Japan, your intervention is considered permanent. The global markets are giving us some very important signals as a result. Continues down here. So Bank of England bails out BlackRock and British buy side. In the wee hours of the morning here on the West Coast, we saw the first central bank capitulation after this year's amplified volatility. And guys, it happens to be the Bank of England. And so, you know, it begs the question, is this going to be a domino effect? Are they just the first to fall? And, you know, the rest are going to follow suit. I mean, look at how these currencies have been performing over the last year. I didn't know where it would come from, although almost certainly from abroad. But I could feel it in the air on Monday morning, especially considering the moves in the US dollar versus its counterparts. The waff of bailouts stayed with me in my dreams on Sunday evening. Uh, Nick Badia just retweeting this out. Intervention week is upon us. These are not the types of market moves uh, that usually proceed extremely tightening. <clears throat> Excuse me. They proceed actually statements. Uh, from policymakers, I don't know what that means. Uh, back to the British bailout this morning, though. Why did the Bank of England have to step in to protect the UK government bond market? Falling prices or rising yields had created a doom loop for pension managers, but not just any pension manager. BlackRock, the privilege of being a too-big-to-fail institution shouldn't be lost on any readers, as large banks and asset managers have repeatedly called on central banks for a lifeline since 2007. It is the status quo. And here's the punchline from Bloomberg. Okay, guys, here's a quote. The BOE, or Bank of England, intervention was required to prevent a vicious cycle becoming even more dangerous for pension funds forced to sell their guilt exposures. This coming from Callum McKenzie, an investment partner at Aon. Uh, he said after BOE intervention, the market's swift and significant reaction underlined the big risk faced by pension funds who have had or could have had their liability hedges reduced. So it's looking like we are in damage control, at least in the UK the Bank of England uh, trying to solve the problem. And, you know, just because the dollar is strong, the U.S. dollar doesn't mean the U.S. is out of the woods. This coming from Stephen Geiger here on Twitter, retweeted out by Ian Binns. Unbelievable daylight robbery. This is happening in the United States. In case you don't realize how bad our debt bubble situation is, listen now. There was a time you went to college campuses and you talked about an equity and debt. I think in this case, it wasn't necessarily fed induced but it was entitlement induced yeah. and that it, it could come this was 10 years ago and i think you said sometime between you know Nostradamus. 2020 you said 2020 and 2035 yeah so it's 2000 is it 2022 is it happening we are we are in deep trouble so everything i said at those colleges is worse in terms of the metrics um except for one thing. And what I miscalculated was, I didn't calculate zero rates, I used 4% rates. But the only thing Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton agreed on in 2016 was don't cut uh, Social Security, don't cut entitlements. Uh, so nothing was done. Joe Biden has excruciated Rick Scott because he dared mention maybe we, we shouldn't be increasing senior pays. But if you look at at the reversal I just talked about, 
and you use the CBO estimate, which is rates at 3.8%, which I think, frankly, is, a, is pretty optimistic, um, given all the things we've talked about. Um, by 2027, the interest expense alone on the debt eats all health care spending. By 2047, it eats all discretionary spending. So we're now getting into fiscal dominance. By the way, by 49, it eats all Social Security. We're getting to the point now where the interest expense on the debt is so high that it's going to eat up our ability to basically service the next generation. I'm not even sure about the current one. Okay. Um. I brought some cyanide if you'd like one. No, 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 I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking maybe we'll be okay, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but yeah, we... Yeah, because we'll be dead. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, <laughs> I brought some cyanide if you want one. Jeez, so not sounding great, especially not if you're Gen X, Millennial, Gen Z, or any generation after that. Um, now, I also saw this, guys, from Peel Outdoors. It's not long now, a level playing field, and did Donald Trump know? As far as the currency devaluations, I've been complaining about that for a long time. This was Donald Trump. I don't know what year this was, but it was when he was in the White House. Listen to this. As far as uh, the currency devaluations, I've been complaining about that for a long time. And I believe that we will all eventually and probably very much sooner than a lot of people understand or think we will be all at a level playing field. Now, what I think he means there is that everything is going bust, guys, and we are just seeing it in free fall right now. And, uh, you know, the Bank of England is just the first to pull the trigger. But could we see all these other countries like Canada, Australia, the Eurozone, uh, and Japan default, or maybe I shouldn't say default, but react in similar ways as the Brits? There is a silver lining though, guys. Michael Branch bringing this to our attention. Macro guru and Real Vision CEO Raul Pal says he's loading up on crypto assets as he expects economic data to dramatically deteriorate over the next several months. So this was a recent interview that he did. And here's his rationale. We will see the economic data over the next few months utterly collapse. Okay, we will see the inflation narrative utterly collapse and we'll be left with the tatters. And the question the market is asking, does it mean equities need to go lower or crypto needs to go lower? And his viewpoint is that, I don't know, but possibly not much lower. So he basically says, even if it does go lower, we have basically um, kind of hit the bottom. So, I mean, it could go another 10% lower but uh, not by much. So this is why he's uh, he's loading up on crypto specifically. I've been buying crypto recently. I managed to get the low in June and added significantly then. So I think the markets have priced in a lot of the apocalypse. Everything thinks, well, it needs to all go down on the next earnings leg. Um, he says, meanwhile, the bond market is completely out of kilter with all other macro and every single other asset class at a rate that has never occurred in history before. And this is going to accelerate the issue that we face. But in the end, I'm still a believer that bond yields come down much sharper than people expect over time, and the Fed are forced to change their stance. And where is the money going to flow, guys? Think about it. Currency is being devalued. People are going to be pushed to either buy hard assets uh, like real estate, art, but you know, some people just might not be able to afford that. Uh, some people are going to buy precious metals, but I think a lot of people are going to buy cryptocurrency. And uh, if you guys remember, Raul Powell, big on the cryptos that solve problems, including XRP. Um, you know, you mentioned XRP. There's a huge community behind it. Obviously, a very high profile lawsuit from the SEC against Ripple. Yeah, I, I own some XRP, actually. A lot of XRP holders are going to be excited to hear about that. When, when did you take a position? Uh, not necessarily, oh. but, but timing. A year ago. Hmm. Um, um, and I bought it for the reason that a, it does have use cases and it is being used. Um, and B, the court case is a phenomenal risk reward. Mm. It got heavily discounted in the price. And then I looked at it and thought, well, what's it going to do? F fall 100% from here to zero. But if it gets solved, you know, it's, you know, 10x. And I'm like, well, that's a no-brainer. Why would you not take a 10 for 1 risk reward that has a catalyst around it? It's just kind of interesting. So, you know, I just thought as a special situation, it was interesting. So obviously, Raul Pal bullish on XRP, guys. And this one from Old Soul 84 If it weren't for central bank intervention, the UK government would have become insolvent. 
<clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going. Okay. In other words, the Bank of England avoided a sovereign debt default by buying up government debt. So now the path is crystal clear. This is what always happens when a currency dies. The central bank will print as much money, in quotes, as needed to support the government. The pound will crash relative to other currencies and your savings will melt like snow in the sun. So what he's saying is these currencies are going to continue to be devalued. The money you have in the bank is going to slowly disappear. And so what does that mean, guys? The pound will crash relative to other currencies, okay? And your savings will melt like snow in the sun. It's the beginning of the end. If you have savings on a bank, withdraw them now. The best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. By a continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate secretly and unobserved an important part of the wealth of their citizens. This is an old quote from John Maynard Keynes, British economist. So money will eventually mean nothing. Remember, it's just paper, not backed by anything. So it begs the question, what are you buying more of? XRP, perhaps some precious metals? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.